welcome to part two of the lymphatic system. So it's important that we start out with the basics of immunity and the basic kinds of cells before we go into any of the details. So first and foremost, what is immunity? Immunity is your ability to resist infectious organisms and other harmful substances. Resistance is your ability to keep that immunity. We've got two kinds of immunity. We have innate, which is also known as non-specific. So it's gonna react the same way to any pathogen, innate. And then we've got adaptive, which is specific, and it is gonna act specifically towards infectious agents that it's been exposed to. And this is gonna develop after we're exposed to certain environmental hazards. The major cell players in the immune system are known as lymphocytes. And there are three major kinds of lymphocytes that we will end up going over in detail. The three are called B cells, T cells, and NK cells, also known as natural killer cells. The B and T cells wander throughout the body. They're able to enter the bloodstream or lymphatics to travel, and they'll typically last several years. Lymphocyte production is also known as lymphocytopoiesis. And this is gonna happen in places like bone marrow, the thymus, and also the peripheral lymphoid tissues. Hemocytoblasts are the ones that are found in bone marrow. So we're gonna talk about those next. They actually divide into two types of lymphoid stem cells. We have lymphoid stem cells group one. So let's talk about that first. Group one is gonna remain in the bone marrow and develop with the help of stromal cells. These are gonna produce the B cells and also the natural killer cells. B cells are gonna differentiate with exposure to something called interleukin-7, and I'm gonna show you this in a drawing. Group two, which we'll talk about next, these guys are gonna to migrate to the thymus and we talked about where the thymus was in part one of the lymphatic system. So that's gonna be right around in here. Um, so the thymus, and then will develop in an environment isolated from the blood. T cells will differentiate with exposure to hormones. So we'll look at that process too. But two of these, it's kind of obvious. So B cells, bone marrow, B, and T cells, thymus is where that's gonna develop. Okay, so of the lymphoid stem cells, remember we had a group one and a group two. Group one is gonna stay in the red bone marrow and the daughter cells that are produced will then mature into natural killer and B cells. Group two is gonna migrate to the thymus. So we'll talk about that one next. But let's look at group one. So here's our red bone marrow and this is our hemocytoblast, okay? And the hemocytoblast is going to produce lymphoid stem cells, group one, and lymphoid stem cells, group two. These are the group that are gonna go to the thymus, so we'll, we'll worry about those in a minute. Group one is gonna be under the influence of something called interleukin-7. Interleukin-7 will help us differentiate these stem cells into natural killer cells and also B cells. Okay, so we're gonna produce natural killer and B cells. This is group one of those lymphoid stem cells. Now, group two of the lymphoid stem cells, they're gonna be sent on to the thymus. We're gonna follow them there. They're gonna develop in an environment isolated from the blood and we're gonna get T cells from these. And this will be from exposure to hormones as opposed to interleukin-7. So let's take a look at where the, the uh, lymphoid stem cells in the thymus are, what they're gonna go through next. Okay, so here's group two of the lymphoid stem cells. Remember, they were gonna migrate to the thymus. So here they are having migrated to the thymus. And they're also gonna be under the influence of thymic hormones. Once those thymic hormones influence this lymphoid stem cell, it will be able to produce, select, and differentiate into mature T cells. So we can see that we have now 
um, differentiated into mature T cells. And mature T cells are gonna be very important um, moving on in the chapter. All three types of these lymphocytes will circulate in the bloodstream, establishing your body's immunity. So remember, we're talking about the NK cells or natural killer. We also have the B cells and the T cells. So looking at the NK cells or natural killer first, these guys are responsible for immune surveillance. So they're actually gonna patrol looking for cells, body cells that are infected by viruses, other pathogens, or even cancerous cells. And what they will do is actually secrete a chemical onto this damaging or invading cell, which will cause that cell's membrane to lyse or rupture, which will kill the cell that's invading. Then we've got the B cells and the T cells. So the B cells and the T cells, they are going to migrate through the body into the peripheral tissues to defend them. Um, and they also retain their ability to divide. They're very essential to the immune system. So looking at the B cell, antibody mediated immunity. So with the B cells, these guys are special because when stimulated, they can differentiate into a plasma cell and that plasma cell can produce antibodies. Those antibodies, which will fight the antigens that are causing the problems, they'll actually attach onto the invading cell and this will start a chain reaction to destroy that cell. Finally, we have cell mediated immunity and this is with the T cells. And the T cells, there's a, there's a specific type of T cell called a cytotoxic T cell. And this is a mature T cell. Um, it plays a role in cell mediated immunity. One thing that it can do is it can actually go up to a cell that's invaded. It can um, attack the cell to, de to destroy that cell or foreign body or the cell that's infected by a virus. So all three of these are pretty formidable in helping us to keep our immunity. Okay, next, innate defenses. So innate defenses block everything. They are nonspecific, so they don't distinguish one pathogen from another. These are some examples of our innate defenses. We're gonna cover part of these in this video, part two. We'll cover the rest in another video. So these are our, our total innate defenses. We have our physical barriers, okay? So this is obviously gonna include the skin. This is our first line of defense against the world. Keeps what's out, out. Keeps what's in, in. Um, we have the phagocytes, which are engulfing cells. They like to eat invaders. We have immune surveillance. So we've already talked about these, the natural killer cells. They're gonna work in destroying um, invading cells in the peripheral tissues. Interferons are chemical messengers that are gonna coordinate the defense against viral infections. Then we've got the complement or complement system, which we will also address in another video. Um, this is a system of circulating proteins that assist antibodies. The complement system is gonna work to destroy pathogens. It also lyses cells, so ruptures them. Um, and it enhances phagocytosis and inflammation. This is the complement system. So again, we're gonna come back to that. Um, and then we've got inflammation, so increased blood flow to an area. And finally, fever or elevated body temperature. So these are all innate defenses. So we're gonna look a little bit more into the first three in this video, and then we'll pick up with the bottom group of four in a different video. Okay, so focusing in on phagocytes. So phagocytes, once they're activated, once they're actually ready to go, they can engulf invaders or pathogens. They can bind to those pathogens so that other cells can kill them, or they can release toxic chemicals that will destroy the pathogen. There's two kinds of phagocytes. We have microphages and we have macro. So if we just look at the prefix, we know right away um, which ones are the big ones and which ones are the little ones. And big is relative because we're talking about cells. But a microphage, these are smaller or micro, and they're gonna include the neutrophils, the eosinophils, and their deal is they're gonna enter the peripheral tissues to fight infection, okay? They're gonna enter those peripheral tissues to fight infection. Macrophage or large eater, 
These can be either fixed or free. Fixed micro macrophages are gonna stay put, okay? So this would include, they're not gonna travel. This would include the microglia. Microglia are found in the central nervous system. We talked about that back in chapter 12. And then we also have the stellate macrophages, which are going to stay in the liver as well. Free macrophages, these guys can roam, they can travel, they can move throughout the body. Um, and one of the examples we talked about in the in chapter 23, which was our um, respiratory system, the alveolar macrophages. So these guys are patrolling the alveoli, looking for dust, germs, particles that they can get rid of that could make us sick. Um, they can move through capillary walls and they are also attracted or repelled by chemicals. Um, or attractants, and this is known as chemotaxis. So they can actually be called into an area because there's something that they need to take care of or attack and dispatch. So those are our phagocytes. So we're gonna move now into the natural killer to finish out this part of the lymphatic system. Okay, finally, natural killer cells or NK cells for short. So these guys, once they're activated, they can actually identify and adhere to abnormal cells. And this is gonna include cells that are cancerous. It doesn't have to necessarily be bacterial cells. Um, once they identify that somebody doesn't belong, what they'll do is they will release a chemical called perforin from their Golgi apparatus. And they do this by way of exocytosis, exocytosis. So when we release these perforins, this actually perforates or makes pores in that abnormal cell. So some of the things we might be able to kill, again, bacteria, also tumor specific antigens that might be on a cell that, that would tell the natural killer cell that maybe this cell is precancerous or possibly cancerous. Um, they can identify these tumor specific antigens on the plasma membrane of the cancer cells. And then they're able to uh, flag those as abnormal and then destroy those cancer cells. Now, obviously that doesn't always work. Um, cells also infected with viruses, they can also take care of those. They will typically present abnormal proteins on their plasma membrane, and this helps the NK cell to identify and destroy them. So this is an example of how they might do that, which is actually pretty awesome. Um, so here we have a natural killer cell, okay? So I'm gonna put a little NK under it just so we remember that. And there's its nucleus and that's its Golgi apparatus, okay? Here's our abnormal cell, the bad guy. Could be anything um, that we mentioned before. This one is nucleated, so maybe it's a cancer cell or a precancerous cell. Um, so the abnormal cell has on its surface antigens which are really red flags for the natural killer cells. These antigens are here in red. So once the natural killer cell recognizes this bad guy, this abnormal cell, it will adhere to it or stick to it. It's, it's almost like it's putting it on lockdown while it gets ready to destroy it. And once it adheres to the bad guy, what's really cool is it's actually able to move the Golgi to face directly towards the abnormal cell. Um, so here the Golgi is here and it'll actually shift it to where it's lined up perfectly with that abnormal cell. And then it begins to spew out this perforin. Perforin, remember, is the chemical that will perforate that abnormal cell. And it's gonna be ejected from the natural killer cell by way of exocytosis or ejection from the, the membrane of the natural killer cell from transport vesicles that came out of the Golgi. So the perforin is released onto the surface of the abnormal cell, which perforates the cell's membrane and causes destruction or lysis. So this takes care of whatever abnormal cell has entered the body. So natural killer cells are the last ones we'll talk about in part two. We'll pick up again in part three and we will finish up the innate defenses.